Hello everyone, and welcome to our second project, our word sculptures. This project is inspired by the work of Ed Rusha. Ed Rusha is an artist from the 1970s. He was interested in looking at text, not as just a means of communication, but as a form of sculpture. We're gonna be taking the same idea behind Ed Rusha's work and putting our own spin on it. First, you need to choose a word which represents you. Here are some past student examples. But unlike the work of Ed Rucha, which is in black and white, we're going to be applying one of my favorite uh, artistic theories called non-local color theory. The idea is that if we shade the shadows dark and shade the highlights light, it doesn't matter what color we use, our brains will still read these as three-dimensional. So your first step is to sculpt your word. Uh, in our lesson plan, as well as on our PowerSchool page, you'll find a video, How to Sculpt Your Paper Word. Watch this. I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to approach your letters. Once you've sketched, or once you've sculpted your word, simply photograph it and add it to your Google submission slide. Photograph it from an angle from above, from in front, and from a dramatic side. We'll pick one of these for our drawing. Same as before, you want to add a grid using the table feature in your Google submission slide and sketch your word. Then complete the, color pen the colored pencil research. This is just a quick video with seven questions that can be found on your Google submission slide. And it's just a review from drawing one basic colored pencil techniques and practices. Now it's time to apply that non-local color theory. You want to choose a complementary color pair. Remember, one must be a primary, red, blue, or yellow, and one must be a secondary, purple, green, or orange. Your choices are blue and orange, red and green, purple and yellow. You want to pick one of these pairs. For the secondary color, you want to use the darker analogous colors to the shadows and lighter analogous colors for the highlights. Remember from drawing one, analogous means next to. For the primary, you want to use monochromatic color theory, simply using white for your highlights and black or darker or heavier pressure for your shadows. Here is a quick example of how this student approached this project. Again, green was the base, but he used yellow green for the highlights, blue green for the shadows. Red was the base, but he used pink for the highlights and a shade of red or maroon for the, high, for the shadows. We're going to practice using this color theory on our shapes and forms. There's a video called Shapes and Forms in Color, uh, again, found on the lesson plan as well as on PowerSchool, where I walk you step by step for how to, through how to sketch your different objects and how to create that smooth transition of values. Bear in mind, the video in the video, I use blue and orange, but I've also provided examples of each color pair found on your lesson plan. You're going to apply the same principles, but to one of your letters. Again, just one on the rough draft. I want to see that you understand this concept before we transfer it onto the final. Again, doing the graphite pencil transfer. Don't forget that one inch border. And then you're all set. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, but that's the project in a nutshell. I look forward to seeing what words you choose and which color pair you choose. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Good luck.